Hey everybody, we're going to start a brand new painting today. It's just going to be a fun little painting, uh, 8 by 10 so let's get started. So here is our 8 by 10 canvas, but first things first, coffee. Ooh, hot. All right, let's start painting. Okay, so on my palette here, I just have some, uh, some white, some black, a darker blue, and uh, marine blue. So I'll be adding colors as we go. And here's the canvas. So we're gonna start painting. So I'm just going to use a brush, just wet it a little bit, and I'm just going to mix up my paint. So a little bit, of, a little bit of black and white just to make some gray. And I want some, a little tiny bit of blue in there, make some darker clouds. There we go. And we're just going to start swirling the clouds in there. So the idea here is just to let your brush do all the work. Because all we're doing here is just covering up the sky and make it kind of grayish, grayish blue. Get some darker color down here. We're going to all blend it in anyways. I'm just going to pick it up a little bit, put it on the edge so I can get the bottom corner here. It's just a small 8 by 10 canvas that uh, we're just going to practice some clouds and maybe put in a few trees. I just wanted to cover up the canvas a little bit and this will all change because all my paintings always do there we go okay it's just to cover up the the canvas now we're going to decide how we want our clouds to be just messy, just messy. That's all it is, it's just messy. Anybody can do this, right? You're gonna get some, some darker area in here. Now everything is still wet and that's okay. And down here, I want it dark. I'm gonna have to go get some more black here. Give me a second. Get some more black down in here, just to make it run a little bit smoother. Some gray. Again, right now, not concerned about how it looks. I just want it messy. Don't want no harsh edges yet. Just messiness. I think we've accomplished it. That is messy. Right now, we're gonna let this dry a little bit while we take a sip of coffee. Okay, now that this is dry, you can tell, <coughs> excuse me, you can tell if it's dry uh, just by simply touching it. And if it's not uh, tacky, then it's dry. Okay, so my plan is to have this area up top a little bit darker, a little bit lighter somewhere in the center, and then it'll be darker again on the bottom. So I'm just gonna, randomly choose some colors here um, well colors from my darkest blue I got three different blues here I got some black and over here I got some more white that I've been mixing over here 
but my plan is just to make some dark areas. So don't be scared to just pick some colors and throw them up on your canvas. So we're just going to have some darker colors. Just to get some uh, definition between some of the storm clouds here. So if the way you can do it is uh, I dip my I dipped it into the darker blue and I started up here and now as a, the paint thins out on my brush or it gets uh, used up on my brush I just kind of go into um, the area over here. Well that's a little bit white but that's okay. We can work with that. And I'm not worrying about cleaning my brush every single time. Again this is just storm clouds that it's going to be like messy and different color and we'll get some gray in there just not even like cleaning my brush really i do like this though so i think i'll come back and do something similar to that again okay i'm just going to dip straight into the black and then as i go down Gonna try to make it more and more black. We'll get some of that black to come up a little bit. And we're not too, too concerned right now about how everything's gonna turn out. And That's the fun part of this. You can mess it up. You're not even really messing it up. Mess it up without messing it up. Get messy. Uh, maybe a little bit darker up here and maybe I'll just dip into the lighter blue here put some just a different color of blue start maybe see what this will look like now I'm just kind of like making small little swirls Super simple. Looking pretty good. So far it's just a sky. There we go. We're going to make some wicked clouds coming down. This needs to be a little bit darker. In order for light to show, I know I said this before, you need to have dark. Dark and light work together. Another way to do this is you can you can put some paint on there and then you can use some kind of mop brush and you can smooth it out if you want to. Blend in some of these colors. Another thing that I like to do is if, if the clouds are dark on the bottom I like to turn my brush facing down like this just so the clouds come down and gives it a different perspective and pushes the, the edge down a little bit more. And now we'll start to put some lighter, lighter uh, colors in there. still all very wet and so when you're doing clouds you want to you want to make sure that you have a separation see how there's like a, a different tone between these that's what makes the clouds stand out so that is what you want to do when you have dark and then like that that's a good storm cloud that's a good storm cloud coming in Bring this down and I can put a little bit, a little bit of white and a tad of light blue in there and you can always come back, just do the edges of the clouds. And turn my brush one way, just up here, a little bit lighter. Get 
Again, straight into the dark blue. And maybe right in here we'll get some darker. Darker areas. Well, if I seen these clouds coming, I'd head indoors, that's for sure. I already have blue on my brush, so we're just going to go with some white. And I want this to be, why not, a little bit brighter. Okay, I'm just looking here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on some white right here. Or I say white, but I mean off-white. And we're just going to make some of these clouds kind of push them up just so they look like big storm clouds coming through. Some indication of some crazy clouds down here. And there we go. Just want to keep some separation between the clouds. To me right now, it looks like the fluffy clouds and everything, but I want dark clouds coming in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip into my dark blue and I'm gonna push these clouds down. So these up here look like they're heavy, a little bit more dark. Like I said, you can do, you can do it where your brush is like upside down like mine right now. Or another way you can do it is just turn your canvas upside down. Now, I, I do like that little edge there. And this here it makes it nice and bright. Let's try it again. See if we can do it again. There we go. All I did was take my light blue, dip my brush slightly. Let's take a little bit of white and we'll make some wicked clouds. Whoa. And maybe on this side too. I kind of want it to come in. We'll, we'll turn our brush the other way. Want it to bring your eye into the center here a little bit more. This brush is actually working well. Something like that. Just want my edge to show a little bit more. Flip your own. You can always flip your brush around and use the other side and see what that does too. Maybe a little bit of gray. Maybe just a little bit of gray in there. All right, I'm going to go to another Filbert brush. I'm going to try it. Um, it's a Filbert uh, number four. So I'm just going to take some dark blue and maybe push some of this down a little bit here. Just along the edge. I don't want to get rid of that lighter blue. I, I kind of like that. Now what I'm doing here with my brush is, it's called scrubbing. It's hard on your brush, uh, depending on what kind of brush you have, obviously. But it is, a, it is hard on your brush because you're not just gliding your brush, you're actually scrubbing it in. But it does, in, in my opinion, it does an outstanding uh, job when it's like this. Now it's important to take care of your brushes, so um, what I'd like to do is if I'm going to take a break from my painting, uh, if I'm going to come back in an hour or so, or two hours, I take my brush and I'll clean them. So the way I clean them is I just get them wet and then I just use regular dish soap, wash them out. And it seems to work for me. All right, it's coming along. Maybe a tad of lighter, lighter clouds down here, push them down. Because you still want some separation with that cloud. Maybe I'll put a little bit of white in there too. A trim of white right in here.
something like that. So we have our clouds. Try different things, different colors, different techniques, different brushes. There we go. That's looking good. I wanted it to look like a storm cloud, so that's why I'm kind of going over it again. Making some marks, that's all I'm really doing. All right, I think we're going to move on now. Okay, so I just put some uh, raw umber brown on my palette. And I think what we're going to do is draw in some trunks. And it's just going to be an indication of where these trees will grow. Something like there. This one will be a little bit bigger though, but a little thicker. And obviously as it gets closer to the top, it gets thinner. Just add a little bit of water just to make a, a point with my brush. It's like my brush doesn't want to like go into a point. And all I'm doing is just drawing the trunk right now. It'll be like smaller ones. This one will come down a little bit further. And obviously it's thicker on the bottom. And because of the angle that we're making this at, it's gonna be even thicker uh, on the bottom than normal, or it's going to get thinner quicker, if that makes sense. See how how it looks like it's like sort of like on an angle, and that's what I'm going for. So maybe thicker on this side. After you have the trunks, then you can work on the branches, and you know where your trees are going to be. And as we go and do each individual tree, we'll be able to make each one unique. Because all trees are unique. Actually, let's start filling some of these up. Start here and we'll work our way over. Just a little tip. When you're doing trees, you don't want them all evenly spaced out. You can see how the, this one here is like super close to its neighbor. And the other ones are kind of like spaced rel relatively the same. But I'm going to put extra ones in there because in nature, they're not spaced out properly, like the same distance all the time. And we're going to keep on going across here. A couple more maybe. And there'll be some more in here too. Don't worry about getting them perfect. They don't need to be perfect right now. Maybe one more right here. Coming up off the side. Okay. Now we get to start the fun thing. We get to make some branches. And we're just gonna make some small little indications of some branches. You wanna be like extremely light with your brush right now. And even though this tree looks like it's coming at an angle, it's like we're laying on the on the forest floor and looking up. So we're just gonna Make the branches reach out a little bit more. And it might be a little hard to see. Maybe I'll zoom in here. There we go. It's okay to have your branches where the little lines you're making don't really touch the other branch. As you can see there, it doesn't matter. Nobody's really going to see it. 
And you can tell, or you can see that I haven't reloaded my brush in a little while. I'm just kind of like using the paint really, really lightly. And it's just a thin indication of some branches. Sometimes what I do is I take my brush and it has water and I'll let it, the water just dip into the, into the paint like that. And that's the, whoops, that's the little bit that I'll use right there. And then I'm lightly, lightly making indication of some branches. And your branches will be a little bit thicker near the trunk of the tree. Okay. And just keep on working, taking your time. And it gets more narrow at the top of the tree. Okay, so now I just did this little corner here, but I have some uh, green that I'm going to take on my angled brush. And I just want the indication of some um, pine trees in the background. And maybe a little bit of black as we get to the bottom here. Maybe another one right here. Down in here, there's going to be some green. In between there. Maybe that, actually, you know what? Let's, let's make this tree a pine tree. There we go, something like that. Maybe, maybe right here we'll put another one. Right here. Over here, I think I'll put some pine trees in the back. Might be too bright, but I'll take a look first. Let's see what it looks like. And you can just keep on doing as much as you would like. There, maybe, maybe a couple right here. Okay, let's go back to doing these trees and then we can come back to this. So we'll grab our zero again and take your time doing these branches. There's no rush. Just keep on working on your branches. So I just have a number three brush hard bristle brush and I'm just taking some of the green and black and just doing the bottom of the, the painting just to look like brush, little trees and foliage. It's not just a little bit, just to cover up the bottom a little bit. And that's all I'm doing just to make it look like there's some foliage in the background. Maybe even bring it up here a little bit, just like that. And what this does is it just gives it the look like there's greenery back there. And then we're that much closer to being done. Number zero brush, it's a liner brush. And I'm gonna start on this side and just do a little bit of highlighting. But take your time when you're doing this. Do find which branch needs another little, uh, little stem coming off, a little branch coming off of it. 
We'll just do a little bit right here. Maybe right in here. Some of the pine. Take your time. There's no rush. Work on this one now. This one, I'm just gonna slow it down just a, just a tad because it's one of the main uh, trees in this scenery. And we're just gonna carry on doing a little bit of highlighting here. And by doing this, you're giving like a two-tone uh, look to the branches very very lightly that's how you get these thin thin lines probably pushing harder with my hand against the cat canvas than than the brush itself you can zoom in a little bit to show you And I'm just touching it, making extremely light squiggly lines. That's a cool thing about branches is there's no set way you have to make a branch. Branch twists and turns and that's what makes it so easy to paint. Like I said, just take your time. There's no rush. Get those tiny little branches in there. And that's what's going to make it look so cool. Just going to do a little bit here at the top. I'm just going to carry on with some of the other highlights. And you do the same. So now I'm just took a little bit of yellow and just slightly, slightly putting some yellow on that green from the pine trees. The green that you see on trees is not necessarily all green. It's got like a, if you look at it closely, it's got like a hint of yellow in there, uh, different colors of green. So that's what I'm doing here. Just a little bit of, a little bit of yellow. Don't have to be too picky about where you put it. Just need a little bit. Gives it a nice look. A little bit down there. And you don't need to be picky about where you put it. There we go. Okay, so here's a little bit closer look of how this painting turned out. I think, in my opinion, that it actually looks pretty good. So again, give it a shot. It was a lot of fun anyways. Okay, I think this is done. Let's have a little closer look. Hopefully it focused there. So even though this is a small uh, eight by 10 canvas that we just uh, painted, hopefully it was a lot of fun to watch and uh, hopefully you'll give it a shot um, painting it. Very simple, do it the way you want and uh, have fun so i like it i'm gonna call it done till next time